Hello, I'm EAC Commissioner Donald Palmer. As part of Cybersecurity Awareness Month, the EAC is discussing different security aspects as it relates to elections. The use of artificial intelligence or AI is nothing new. In fact, you may have a thermostat or robotic vacuum in your home right now that uses artificial intelligence. Like any technology, AI tools are used for a variety of purposes, good, bad, and neutral. But how might this technology impact elections? And what can election officials and voters do to prevent any potential negative impacts of AI on the information they might receive? To discuss this and more, I'm joined by Howard Knapp, who's the Executive Director of the South Carolina Elections Commission. As South Carolina's Chief Election Official, he is responsible for supervising 46 county boards of voter registration in elections. He serves as the agency head for that commission, and he's the Chief Election Official for the state of South Carolina. Sherry Polin uh, is the Director of the Hamilton County, Ohio Board of Elections. In this role, she is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the board and administering all local, state, and federal elections that occur in Hamilton County. She's also the president of the Ohio Association of Election Officials. We also have uh, Steve Deitch, a senior election subject matter expert for the EAC. In this role, he helped create the EAC's AI toolkit for election officials, which is available on EAC.gov. Previously, he served as the elections coordinator for Ottawa County, Michigan for seven years. I'm gonna to try to take a breath now. Thank you all for being here. Um, to start, or with our first question, I'm gonna ask Steve, uh, when we talk about artificial intelligence, what do we mean in the context of election administration? Yeah, it's a great question. So artificial intelligence is really in itself a form of machine learning. So essentially, instead of having to program uh, for example, a robot vacuum to do all the uh, to map out your living room, like know where every piece of furniture is. Uh, the robot itself can map it on its own just by bumping into the walls and chairs in your living room. Um, when we talk about AI in elections, and generally what we're talking about today when we talk about AI tools, are tools that can generate content based on a simple prompt. So these are tools that learn through trial and error, just like the robot vacuum, but they're used to create text images and even extremely realistic video. And this can directly impact uh, the information about elections that's out in the world. So why has it become an important topic when it comes to elections? Is it simply we're catching up with the rest of uh, society as we, we start to face these issues? It, it, that's a really good question. So yeah, uh, it's become an important topic for election officials in particular because it's because of the implications with communicating with voters. Um, these tools are really helpful for creating voter education materials, uh, but they can also be used to produce hyper-realistic misleading information, everything from altered video, altered images, to altered websites. So it's really a communications issue for voter education. My next question is for Executive Director Knapp and Director Poland. Um, as election directors, what concerns do you have about AI, especially related to potential misleading information? Uh, and have you started to see the impacts of AI on your jurisdictions? Let's start with let's start with uh, Director Knapp. Sure, Don. Um, so AI hasn't quite shown itself in South Carolina uh, to, to our knowledge, but we do have concerns about the, the effects of AI on South Carolina elections. Um, number one, voter manipulation. So AI can create targeted messaging um, and advertising. So for example, it can be used to generate fake news stories, which we have seen occur in other countries. Um, and we've seen other countries do this to other countries. So we know it's possible. Um, also voter suppression. Um, AI can be used to identify um, and target voters with messages discouraging them to vote or making it, you know, giving out misinformation so that it seems too difficult to register or giving them bad information about where to go to vote. Um, and overall, it just has a reduced trust in the electoral process. Um, the trust in elections is already a challenge. And when there's misinformation put out there by AI, it just makes the process that much more difficult to navigate. And finally, AI and cyber attacks are kind of hand in glove right now. Um, hackers could use AI to develop new and more sophisticated ways 
to attack election systems just by keying in certain coding to um, chatbots and other AI systems. Um, the AI systems themselves could help hackers hack better and more efficiently, um, which makes our jobs and law enforcement jobs even more difficult. Director Poland, what are you what are you seeing in Ohio, and you know, are you seeing similar things on the use of AI and, and your concerns? Yes, uh, very similar um, to what Mr. Knapp has has described. I we we've not seen um, an impact yet on election administration, but we share the concerns, right? The concerns over um, just a more sophisticated tool of um, for producing uh, mis and disinformation, which we've been battling for several years now. Also share the same concern regarding cybersecurity. Um, you know, with AI, they can gather a lot more information about the election officials themselves, as well as um, our office. And therefore, you know, for an example, um, they could make much more sophisticated uh, phishing emails. Uh, that will make it harder for election officials to differentiate between, um, you know, something that's that's a good actor and a bad actor. So, have not seen its impact yet in Ohio, um, but concerned that we'll be seeing it soon. Okay, uh, Steve, back to you. Um, what do voters need to know about AI from your perspective? You know, how can voters know when information or images are accurate? or not accurate or created by artificial intelligence. I mean, it may, may actually be accurate, but as you know, AI can sometimes be stale or not fully accurate providing context. What do the voters need to know and how do they discern fact from fiction? Absolutely. So just to touch on something that uh, Directors Knapp and Poland mentioned, it, this is a it, sort of an extension of existing threats. So election officials are already working very hard on cybersecurity issues, on voter communication issues, um, but this is enhances those things. So voters, I think it's important for voters to be aware that these issues are um, more prominent uh, because of these new tools. Um, but as far as information goes, uh, voters really need to be considerate of the sources of their information. And that's whether information is being shared, uh, who's sharing the information or who's created the information. So right now, there's not really a standard way to tell if a recording or video has been altered using AI tools. Um, there's been discussions about different forms of watermarking, but those things are not rolled out yet. And the tools, meanwhile, are improving every single day. And the more they improve, the harder it will be to tell the difference between a real image and one that was created with a very simple text prompt. So Executive Director Knapp and Director Poland, um, both of your offices have received EAC Clearinghouse Awards for election innovation, specifically for voter education and engagement programs. Can you talk about how these programs and similar efforts could be useful in dispelling false information generated by AI? And this time, we'll go with Director Poland first, and then we'll go to the Executive Director Knapp. Yeah, I think over the past two years, uh, our local board of elections um, has had two separate projects in order to, um, you know, combat mis and disinformation and and to educate the public. I think in 2020, after 2020, we realized that our outreach program can no longer only be about how to register to vote, when to register, how to vote by mail. We have to educate the public on how their elections are administered. Um, we realize there's a real lack of knowledge there. And the more knowledge um, a voter has about the process, I think the more um, faith they will have in the election results and trust they will have in the election. So uh, one thing we did after 2020 is we started a series of did you know videos. Uh, because we found that when new election officials are hired or temporary workers come into our board and begin working, you know, the comments always, I had no idea. 
I had no idea what went into election and administration. I had no idea of the different layers of security and protocols that were in place. So um, that was something that we could uh, post on social media and our website uh, sort of throughout the process. Again, just short little videos. Did you know we conduct a mock election before early voting begins and describe that process? Did you know we conduct logic and accuracy testing? Discuss that. Um, and then last year, we um, expanded on a program we had um, actually started with the Girl Scouts. Um, and it's called, we call it the Behind the Ballot Tour. So we invite um, groups into the Board of Elections. We give them a uh, presentation, a brief presentation. We do this in a bipartisan uh, fashion. That's the way elections are structured in Ohio. It's Democrats and Republicans actually working together, and it does work in uh, board of, boards of elections. So we bring the groups in. We give them a presentation. We talk about who we are and what we do uh, because we want to really... Um, hone in on the fact that we're humans, we're, we're, we're members of your community, we're not some, you know, um, wizard behind a, a curtain. So we open the curtain up, bring them in, give them a presentation, and then take them on a tour of our facility and let them see where the processes take place, who the people are that are doing the work, how they do it. And it's been extremely popular, our behind the ballot tours, uh, which started with um, a simple tour for the Girl Scouts in order for them to receive a merit badge has escalated into about a half dozen or dozen tours a year. We have some that we focus specifically for the candidates who are appearing on the next elections ballot. So they understand the process. We have one that's specifically tailored for our local media. Uh, we want them to understand how elections are administered and where to go to if they're hearing stories and, and, and to find out the true in, information. Um, and then, you know, again, for our Girl Scouts, for different school age groups, and really any civic group or just groups of citizens. They might not even be organized um, into a, a civic group. They can sign up online um, and we open up the doors and peel back the curtain for them. Executive, Executive Director Knapp, uh, talk, talk, talk to us about South Carolina's programs. It sounds like civic engagement is, is a, you know, a huge um, part of the solution here. Yes, um, civic engagement is a big part. We have an entire department of public information and we engage with all of our stakeholders, um, starting with elected officials, parties, and uh, just community groups, nonprofits. Um, our Cleary Award was um, really for, it's our crisis communication card that we created for our county election officials. And this card was, um, it's always kind of been a thing that we did, but we've we formally created it, laminated it, and we gave it to them. And it's how to respond appropriately to basically a bad event happening or bad news happening. Um, you know, and it's simple steps that while we're in a nice, pleasant environment, it's common sense. But when everything's hitting the fan and you're kind of panicking, you need something very quick and easy to look at. Like, this is how you engage with the press about it. This, these are some things you should say. Um, one thing that we are going to add to that card is about AI and is about misinformation because a lot of what we're having to answer on election day is misinformation. Um, and some of it's generated by AI. So you could say, you know, yes, I saw that post on Facebook about this. This is, you know, first of all, we reported it. That's misinformation. That's not correct. This is where you go to vote. Um, so that card will be actually adjusted to include um, things that could be created by AI. Um, but yeah, getting the communication out to the voters and to the candidates is our top priority. Um, and just making sure they know that we are the trusted source for all election information. Yeah, so trusted source. Um, my next question is for uh, back to Steve Dage here with the EAC. Um, you know, you were election official. What can election officials do to prepare for the use of AI and election administration in the next coming years? You've put together this toolkit with you and your team um, to, to support that effort. Talk to us about what officials can do. Absolutely. Um, so directors Nav in Poland illustrated this very well, that election officials are already doing much of this work. Um, much of the information about elections exists online, 
But both of those programs that were just highlighted are face-to-face in-person interactions with voters. And having a good in-person interaction with a voter will go so far to make sure that that individual voter has trust in the system, they understand how things work, and they know that these are things that are happening in real life. Um, as related to the to the toolkit, um, the toolkit was really intended to build awareness of AI tools for election officials so they know what's out there and what's what could very likely be coming at them. Um, the key piece of the toolkit, though, really isn't sharing information online. It's the customizable handout at the end of the toolkit, which really is intended to be printed and distributed in person. So this can be printed and put on an office uh, office counter or distributed at events. And on the handout, and really I think what is imp important here is that it's informing the in-person interaction you're having with voters. So you can tell them directly, this is our website, this is where you know to go to get election results. This is where you know to go to get my phone number so that if you have a question or something goes wrong, you can call me. That's the information that voters really need to know. And that's not really related to online information exactly. As long as you know, the correct places to go online. So the QR codes on the handout can be changed. You can put your direct information there to your website, your direct election results page, or um, you can also add links if you have a dedicated YouTube channel. A lot of folks have um, have live streams of their elections offices or processes that they put on YouTube. You can put that there so that folks are getting the direct information straight from your office. And of course, your exact social media handles so that people know that they're interacting with you online and not somebody who's pretending to be you. So this really is a template to allow election offices to, you know, not start from scratch and creating something that they can work with um, their team and provide this to the public. Absolutely. And a lot of election officials, like I said, are already doing much of this work. This is really just help, intended to, to help enhance that work. So we've talked a lot about the dangers of AI. I'm just giving you an opportunity if we wrap this up. What were some of the benefits to using AI do you think election officials should be aware of? Yeah, uh, there's actually quite a bit. So with any new technology, things can be both good and bad. Um, AI definitely is already making it harder to find good information online. Uh, if the sort of silver lining there is that this isn't entirely a new problem. Um, but election officials are also able to use these tools. So uh, AI tools can help streamline processes that election officials are already doing. They can be integrated into uh, platforms that election officials are already using. So as an example, um, Canva, which is a really widely used uh, platform for creating voter education materials or really just any other sort of graphics, um, is already using AI tools. So those are embedded into Canva. You can use it to very quickly and easily edit images um, or create templates very, very quickly. Uh, we're also likely going to see these tools um, extend into Microsoft Office products and other general Office tools that we use every single day. So it become easier to write content, uh, might improve the forms that we use with our, with our candidates and voters. Um, so there's going to be a lot of potential uses here. And we're not quite to the point where a lot of like, election-specific functions are being improved with AI. But I do expect that to happen very quickly and very rapidly in the near future. Thank you, Steve Dage with the EAC. I'd also like to thank our guests, Executive Director Knapp and Director Poland, um, Director, Executive Director Knapp from South Carolina and Director Poland from Hamilton County, Ohio. Thank you for joining us and, um, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you for having us.